In this video, we're going to go over the different stimuli that can cause hormones to be released. And we'll also go over how hormone levels are regulated. In general, there are three different ways that hormones can be released. The first is through humoral stimuli. And in this diagram, you can see how it works. A humoral stimulus is essentially looking at the presence or concentration of a specific molecule in blood. In this case, we're looking at blood calcium levels. So when blood calcium levels are low, this will stimulate the parathyroid glands to secrete parathyroid hormone, PTH. PTH will then exert its effect on target tissues to help elevate blood calcium levels. A couple more examples include high blood glucose concentrations will stimulate the pancreas to secrete insulin. Insulin will increase blood glucose uptake from cells and this will help to lower blood glucose levels. Low blood glucose concentrations will stimulate the pancreas to secrete glucagon. Glucagon will act on the liver to stimulate gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis to help increase blood glucose concentrations. A second way of causing hormones to be released is with a neural stimulus. There are two different ways that this can be done. One way is through neurons that directly release these hormones. Another is with neurons that stimulate endocrine glands to release hormones. An example of the former are hypothalamic neurons that secrete vasopressin. These neurons have cell bodies in the hypothalamus and axons that project through the posterior pituitary gland. When these neurons fire action potentials, they also secrete vasopressin into the blood. So these are neurons that synthesize and secrete the hormone. The example of the second with neurons stimulating endocrine glands, you can see an example of this in this diagram. So here, there are neurons in the sympathetic nervous system that stimulate the adrenal medulla to release epinephrine and norepinephrine during fight or flight responses. A third way of releasing hormones is through a hormonal stimulus. In this case, we're looking at what are called tropic hormones. Tropic hormones stimulate endocrine glands to secrete hormones. And in this diagram, you can see an example of how this works. The hypothalamus releases a number of different tropic hormones. For example, the hypothalamus releases corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH. CRH acts on the anterior pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. ACTH will then act on the adrenal cortex to secrete cortisol. So in this case, both CRH and ACTH are tropic hormones that stimulate other endocrine glands to release hormones. Some other examples you can see in this diagram include TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone, which is released from the hypothalamus and stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone that acts on the thyroid gland to release the thyroid hormones. And not shown the diagram, but another example is the hypothalamus also releases growth hormone releasing hormone that stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release growth hormone. Okay. So now that we know the different ways that a hormone can be released, let's talk about hormone regulation. So the first thing you know is that when a hormone is released in the blood, it will exert its effects, but those effects are not going to last forever. And that's because hormones are constantly metabolized and secreted from the body. So if the body wants to maintain a certain level of a hormone, it has to be constantly secreting these hormones. At the same time, the secretion of these hormones needs to be carefully regulated, otherwise this will result in different metabolic disorders. One of the ways that hormone regulation is achieved is through negative feedback. And negative feedback is a very helpful process to help maintain hormone levels within a desired range. And here we have an example of how this works. So as we mentioned earlier, the hypothalamus releases CRH corticotropin releasing hormone that acts on the anterior pituitary gland to release ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone that acts on the adrenal cortex to release cortisol, which will then act on its target tissues. Cortisol 
will act as a negative feedback regulator. It will act on both the hypothalamus and interior pituitary gland to inhibit the secretion of CRH and ACTH. So essentially, negative feedback is referring to how a product in the pathway is inhibiting upstream uh, steps in the process. And an example of how this is very helpful is a situation where a person has damage to one of their adrenal cortex or one of their adrenal glands. In this case, if one of the adrenal glands is damaged, then there will be a lower release of cortisol. And if the levels of cortisol in the body drops, that means that there will be less negative feedback on the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. And this will result in increased secretion of CRH and ACTH, which will then stimulate the remaining adrenal gland to secrete more cortisol, to bring the cortisol back to the desired levels. Okay, and of course, this is just one example of negative feedback. There are many, many other examples. This essentially just tells you how the general mechanism of negative feedback works.